Hi, welcome to Pyography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this beginner-friendly episode, I am going to show you how to create the Jaguar artwork. This video is part of a three-part series, but I will talk more about that at the end of the video. Well, let's get burning. The Essentials Here is our reference photo. For part one, we are going to create just the essentials of the Jaguar. This means we will need the shape of the Jaguar, the Jaguar's spots, the Jaguar's color, and of course the Jaguar's facial features. I am also going to add the log so that our Jaguar is not floating in space. Transferring Print the pattern on lightweight paper, like standard copier paper. Then coat the back side with a layer of dark graphite. Place the pattern graphite side down on the board and secure with two pieces of tape. Then carefully trace over the pattern. Check for any missing lines before you remove the pattern. Shape and Spots Use a writer pen tip of your choice and burn over the trace lines. Keep the color in the tan range and use a light hand pressure. Try to let the pen tip gently glide over the surface of the wood. A light hand pressure and a pale burn stroke are especially important when burning over the dashed or dotted guidelines. The dashed lines mark the transition where the orange fur ends and the white fur begins. Except the line on the nose, which is needed for part two of this three-part tutorial. Now use your writer pen tip and burn in the spots. I find it helpful to burn around the edges of the spot and then fill in the spot using circular motion. I started out with the Micro Writer pen tip, but I quickly switched to Colwood's standard C Writer pen tip. The reason is that this pen tip is bigger, so it burns the spots in quicker. Also, the larger size is less likely to sink down into the surface of the wood. I have the heat set on my burner just to the point where I get a light brown burn result. This allows me to burn in the spots quickly, but the heat isn't so high that it chars the wood adjacent to the spots. The spots should be dark in color, but they do not need to be perfectly uniform in color. As long as they are mostly dark, or in the brown tonal ranges, they will be fine. There are a lot of spots to burn in, and they get a bit monotonous to work on, so don't feel like you have to get through them all in one day. I took a couple of days working on them for short periods at a time. Feel free to use a shader pen tip on the larger spots. Lastly, rub over the board with a pencil eraser to remove any residual graphite. The fur. Now let's take care of the fur. Use a shader pen tip and burn the fur to a dark tan or very light brown color. Try to keep the color fairly uniform. Avoid the areas of white fur. Make sure to check with the reference photo to determine where the white fur is located. I am using a combination of uniform and circular motion as my burn methods. You can use whatever burn method you prefer. Our only goal in this step is to burn in the orange colored fur on the Jaguar. Do not worry about contouring or shadows. We will handle those in part two. Use the flat of the shader as you burn and use a light hand pressure. We want the pin tip to gently rest on the surface of the wood so it can easily glide over the surface. Now let's talk about the heat setting. My burner is set just so that I get a medium to dark tan burn result. 
A common question I get is how to create smooth burn results. The key is using a light hand pressure, a lower heat setting, and reburning. The light hand pressure keeps the pin tip heat stable so you get a more consistent burn result. A lower heat setting means the pin tip is not getting as hot so you can work slower and have more control over the burn results. Plus, you are less likely to get dark spots or blotches when you first touch the pin tip to the wood. With reburning, you want to apply new burn strokes that overlap existing burn strokes. For example, let's start with two wide burn strokes that are adjacent to each other. Or in other words, these two burn strokes are touching. When reburning over them, the new burn stroke should straddle the seam where the two old burn strokes touch. So this means that the new burn stroke would overlap onto half of each of the old burn strokes. The process of overlapping your burn strokes really helps hide individual burn strokes, giving you smoother results. As I mentioned before, I am using either circular motion or uniform strokes as my burn method. Uniform strokes provides much smoother results, but I find I get really bored using that burn method. So that's why I tend to use circular motion more. It is very easy to get a mottled or blotchy looking texture using circular motion. To help prevent this, try not to burn in one area for too long. Will your artwork be ruined if the color on the Jaguar isn't uniform? Heck no. Just do your best and try to keep the burn strokes fairly similar in color. You may have noticed I switched to a different shader when I started working on the body. This shader is larger than the previous one, so it produces wider burn strokes that allow me to get the burning done faster. Other than the larger size, the shaders work the same. Any shader will work for this job. I want to mention that you should always keep your pin tip in optimal position when burning along edges. This means that the front edge of the shader is on the inside edge of the object. The body of the shader is angled over the area you are burning. Keeping your pin tip in this position when you work along the edges will ensure that you have crisp, clean edges. It also helps prevent burning past the edges of the object that you are burning on. Along the back of the legs, some white fur is found. Determining the location of the white fur is the only thing I used the reference photo for. Okay, yes, I did use the photo to create the pattern, but I didn't consult with the photo when burning in the Jaguar other than making sure where the white fur was located. I should mention that I did ignore the white fur along the front of the back leg. I did this just to simplify the image. Also, I mentioned before about keeping your pin tip in optimal position when working along edges. Another part of that is to rotate the board as needed while you're working. Let's work a little on the white fur. Begin by burning a wide tan line along the back of the foot. This is solely to help it stand out against the unburned background. Then burn in the back leg to a light tan color as it is in shadows. I am using uniform strokes for this because I want the color as smooth and as uniform as possible. Burn a light tan band of color along the bottom of the belly. This serves the same purpose as the one along the back of the foot. It helps it stand out from the unburned background. Add a shadow on the back front foot. Then burn in cast shadows under the feet. 
I will tell you now that my shadows are not dark enough. I had to reburn them later, but that didn't happen until part two. Lastly, burn a tan band of color adjacent to the cheek on the face. This is to help differentiate between the white fur of the face and the neck. The facial features. Begin by burning darkly around the eyes using a writer pen tip. Also, burn in the pupils to a dark brown or black color. Then burn the dark area around the nostril openings. Make the color the same as what you burned around the eyes. Afterwards, burn in the dark area on the mouth. Again, burn it so that the color matches what you burned around the eyes and the nose. Switch to a shader pen tip and lightly burn over the nose and eyes. Burn them to a medium tan color. Now burn pull-away strokes along the outer edge of the ears. Start the stroke on the outer edge and pull it towards the inner ear. Stop the stroke near the halfway mark. When I burned the left ear, I couldn't hold the pen tip in the same angle that I did with the right. So my burn strokes ended up being thinner and darker in color than the ones on the right ear. If I had rotated the board, I could have matched the right side. Instead, I'm re-burning the right ear to make it match the left. Lastly, lightly burn over the chin to help it stand out from the unburned background. The Log Use the razor edge of a shader or a writer pen tip and re-burn over the pattern lines on the log. Make them a dark brown color. Then use the flat of a shader and burn wide bands of color that follow along the pattern lines. The dark pattern lines will appear as cracks. Plus, the lines give the tree a curving shape. Burning the wide bands of color in the same direction as the lines reinforces the curving shape that we are creating. The wide burn strokes should vary in color to add a little visual interest to the log. The last thing that I want to mention is that I am using a large shader so that I get the log done quickly. Any shader pen tip will work for what we are doing on the log. Well, that's it for this episode. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is a three-part series. In the second part, we will take the artwork that we created in this tutorial and give it more tonal depth and a bit more of a 3D appearance. In the final part, the third one, we will create a background. On my website, Pyography Made Easy, I have the written version of this tutorial along with the reference photo and a free pattern that you can download. I will put a link to that in the description below. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week.